Hey everyone, welcome back to the lab. In this video, we're gonna be talking about why F Sharp is a fun programming language. So F Sharp is often described as a fun programming language. I've personally described it thus many different times, but this isn't really self-evident if you haven't used F Sharp. How can a programming language be fun? In this post, I'm gonna share why I think F Sharp is fun. Fun for functional. First off, F sharp is fun is a pun on a few things. Fun for function. So fun is the keyword for a function often used in anonymous or no arg contexts. That's when we're saying fun, we actually are talking about, you know, its keyword. F sharp is functional first. And so using fun is a simple way to reference that. It's one of the key things that separates it from a lot of different other languages. And if you write an F sharp pro program, you're probably gonna see fun appears a lot inside of it. This is because prior to .NET 8, many list operations required the use of fun to declare anonymous functions. And when you're doing a list operation, usually you have an anonymous function in there because it's a bit more ergonomic. And so because F sharp is functional, it's gonna lead towards a lot of these like list operations. Here I'm talking about like, you know, your map, your filter, your sorts, your iters or like for eaches in other languages. Uh, we use a lot of higher order functions like that to make it a lot more readable and stuff. And so if you're using anonymous functions in there, probably gonna have fun and therefore your whole program is gonna have lots of fun in it. And so if you've never used um, F sharp before, it's kind of like very simple like this. We got a let, here's a function. We're saying it's a function by this. Here's the fun keyword. Um, we're saying, what does it, the function actually do? It's gonna prevent, or it's gonna print F sharp is fun here. Then I can call it like this. I ignore the return because there's nothing here. It's unit. And this will print F sharp is fun. And so on the surface, F sharp is fun because it's punny. F sharp is functional and fun is how you declare many kinds of functions. F sharp feels like a toy. But I don't think punniness is the only reason this description sticks. After all, what makes something funny or sticky is that it tends to hold some grain of truth. I believe F sharp actually is a fun language. And to explain this, I wanna look at another language that many people think of as fun, Python. I think most people who say Python is fun do so because it feels like a toy. It is easy to use and do things compared to other languages they've used, allowing them to focus on doing what they want and not fighting their tools. Thus, comparatively, Python is a fun language. Python feels like a toy because it has low boilerplate. And so when you write Python, you don't have to use brackets to declare blocks. Um, you're just using tabs or indentation. Uh, you don't have to use these semicolons to end statements, which is, you know, a ridiculous thing that is required <laughs> in some languages. Um, and, you know, it never actually makes things safer. It really just like causes the compiler to yell at you more. Uh, so not, not great. Um, and you can run and write it like a script. And so, you know, some languages require you to have all this like boilerplate to even get things up and running. If you ever used Python before, you can basically just start writing Python and then you're just like, hey, Python, run this and it just runs. It's very easy, low ceremony, low boilerplate to write. The next reason it feels like a toy is because it's really easy to read. Um, it's just often likened to pseudo English. So like if I were to give, you know, a, a simple program to someone who doesn't program and you give it Python, they can basically figure out what it's doing for the most part. If you were to give like Java or C, C++ to someone, they would have no idea. It's like some crazy alien language. Uh, like it, it would be very, very hard to figure out. Um, so comparatively, Python is very easy to read. And the last thing is that it's really easy to do common things. So, you know, as much as, you know, people love to rag on Python, it actually has a really good standard library that's making it very easy to do simple list operations, conditional logic, HTTP requests, and file manipulations. Like it just kind of works and it's easy to read. And so it's just easy to do these common things. So it feels fun compared to these other languages. So similarly, F sharp feels like a toy. It has really low boilerplate. It also doesn't use brackets, it's indentation based. Um, it doesn't have those stupid semicolons at the end of statements. You can basically run and write it like a script. There's very few classes. Often it's just like a little module. You write your functions, you call your functions, that's it. Not to mention the type system is like so much easier to write um, than you'd think from like looking at C sharp or you know Java factory hell. Very low boilerplate required. You get strong typing with basically writing it like a dynamic language. Um, so very, very low boilerplate for what you're trying to accomplish. It's also pretty easy to read. So it has heavy emphasis on pipe and list operators for more concise declarative code. So these are things like, you know, maps, sorts, filters, um, pipes are basically instead of, well, I'll just show you here an example. Pipes are basically, instead of having to have like a lot of individual intermediate variables, you can basically just pipe things through um, so that it's, it's much easier to show how operations are 
together. And if they're only there to mutate a single variable, you're not like scattering them around, which makes it harder to read. Again, it has that like expressive non-verbose type system for safety and conciseness. So it's very easy to write these types, but because um, it has a great type system, you actually don't have to declare the types everywhere. It can infer a lot of these things. So you can write it with the conciseness, easiness of a dynamic language, but you get all the strengths of a strict language without the fluff. And of course it makes a lot of decisions like being immutable first. So you can kind of tell that like, hey, if this thing says it's this, it's not gonna change, that's all it is, which lowers mental overhead and thus makes it easier to read. Now I do wanna caveat that F sharp looks very different from mainstream programming languages. So you do need to give it a sec. But I think once you understand the syntax, you're gonna be like, wow, why aren't more languages like this? Okay, and the last one is that it's you know easy to do common things. And so Python has a really great standard library for doing all these common things. Well, F sharp also does this because it can leverage everything that .NET does. C sharp is one of the best enterprise languages. So it's got a first class standard library and it's also got enterprise grade ecosystem that it can basically leverage to do anything at once. And so F sharp feels like a toy for the very similar reasons that Python does. It allows you to write easier to read programs with less boilerplate for common things. Thus, comparatively, compared to other languages out there, it's fun to write. F sharp is more fun at scale. So toys are fun, but you'll often lose interest once it loses novelty or it no longer fits the use cases or you find a better toy. Toys that have longevity are those that can scale with you to new use cases and difficulty levels. So Python is used in many large scale deployments, but at scale, it runs into many issues. It's a toy in the former category. It's like a video game that has a good earlier mid game, but falls off at the end game, which means there's little reason to keep playing or using it at scale. And I'm here speaking from experience, having worked in a lot of different enterprise hyperscale Python environments. Um, here's, you know, some examples. So, you know, Instagram serves about 2 billion monthly active users and runs on Python monoliths. So yes, it scales, but they ran into a lot of issues with this. So, you know, they ended up building their own 10x faster Python runtime. Um, so they forked Python uh, to, to try and make it scale. Um, they basically built its own entire ecosystem of dev tools to like make type checking better, to restart the monoliths because they would fail so often, um, which is like a crazy thing to do for, you know, something that runs in prod. Um, and at the end of the day, they moved, moved most of the hot or like complex workloads out of Python and into different languages like Hacklang um, to actually allow it to keep up with, with what they were doing. So yes, Python goes to hyperscale, but lots of problems and, you know, people put in a lot of effort and investment to kind of overcome the, the problems at scale, overcome the lack of end game. Similarly, uh, Reddit ran on Python monoliths for years, for about a decade, 13-ish years, I think, they ran on a huge Python monolith. Um, but just a few years ago, they called bankruptcy on the entire ecosystem for scale and maintainability reasons, and is currently undergoing a multi-year project to rewrite its backend in Go. That's like a ridiculous decision, but they decided it was worth it because they just couldn't find an end game with Python. And if I like condense down kind of my experience with Python, what I've kind of seen out in the industry, I think the primary issues with it at scale are basically these three things. First, it has a rudimentary type system. Um, it has very simple types. Um, most of these types are linter enforced, which is to mean that like, yes, there's types, but does it mean anything? And it's like, not really. Um, and even when it does, it's not consistent because it's like not in the language. I mean, it's very, very easy to override these things incorrectly. So it's like you, it's almost like TypeScript does this a lot too, where it feels like you have a type there, but it's actually not enforced. And therefore you might as well not have a type because you're lying to yourself in the runtime. People that don't like types, you know, you're just wrong. <laughs> types are good at scale. That, that's just the only thing that, that works. Um, second one is performance is mad, got nothing here. You should know by now that Python just like is not as performant as basically any other language. And finally, the syntax has lots of implicit gotchas. So there's this idea in Python of like being Pythonic. Um, but the problem is that the, really the core problem is the dynamic and rudimentary types. This allows you to be Pythonic, but it actually just really allows you to shoot yourself in the foot so much. Um, I could rant on this in a whole different video, but most of this is like, you know, duct taped class declarations. You're often like casting things that, that aren't good. And then it's got a ton of memory usage pitfalls, which is honestly why it's so slow a lot of the time, you know, it could go on and on and on and on. Lots of, of issues with Python at scale. But the point of this is, is that Python is fun to work with because it feels like a toy and it can scale. I showed you the ones earlier. Also Rippling where I currently work uses a Python 
monolith, but it starts to break down at scale and it becomes a lot less fun to work with. At scale, it starts to actually get in your way of doing things. It, it's no longer fun. It's, it's preventing you from having fun actually. And so in this way, it's very much like a video game that does not have an end game. The, the further you get on to achieving everything, the less and less useful it is to continue doing this thing. And so what I think really hooks people on F-sharp is that it's fun both at small and large scale. It has a good progression from early through the end game. And we'll look at how it, it tackles these like same three issues that Python has. So the first one is that it has a really excellent type system. It is very easy to model your domain at small scale and at large scale, which solves literally so many issues. We're not gonna have null pointers. We don't have nulls. We have higher order types. We can do things like options and exhaustive pattern matching and ensure that any edge cases we handle or we explicitly don't handle. So many issues at scale are just because of this imprecision. And so I, I really can't, you know, highlight this enough. This type system is like the thing. Any language that doesn't have a type system this good, I, I think is just gonna die in the next 10 years when people realize this. And for people who have never used F sharp, I think you should think of the type system of Rust. Rust has what everyone calls as like one of the best type systems ever, OCaml. People are, you know, praise OCaml. And even TypeScript, a lot of people really love the types of TypeScript, you know, assuming it was actually strongly typed and didn't have that issue of it might not actually be the type you called it. If you like any of those, that is the F sharp type system. You can do everything you can there in, in F sharp with the same, you know, low amount of boilerplate, low amount of ceremony. So it has a really excellent type system. The next is that performance is great. You know, it's not gonna beat out Rust or and it's not gonna beat out your hand rolled memory management of C or C++ or Zig, but it is gonna compete with stuff like Go, Java, and C Sharp, and you'll have a better time doing it. And all of these are like usually six-ish times better than Python, depending on uh, what, what you're, you're writing and stuff. Obviously it's, you know, dependent, but about six times or more is, is probably the speed up you'll get from Python. And the final thing is that the syntax pushes you towards success. And so I think when you first start writing F sharp, you will probably fight with the type system a little bit in F sharp's way of doing things. In the same way, when people get into Rust, they're fighting the thing. But as you go, you're gonna start to realize that the strong type system and the enforcement it has is actually trying to save you from many, many, many common pits of failure. And this is why people, you know, they bounce off Rust because it's so hard to get going, but as they get into it, it's been the number one loved language for the past like five, 10 years. You realize that it's actually saving you from yourself. And again, it's things like really the core is that strong type system and the enforcement it provides really guardrails from preventing you from falling off a cliff or shooting yourself in the foot. It's got exhaustive pattern matching to catch these very common issues where your code says it's covering all cases, but actually it's missing a few. Um, and it has lack of nulls, which is, you know, the billion dollar problem. And so if you keep working in it, eventually you're kind of pushed towards this simple scalable system of composable parts. And at scale, that is the only thing that scales. And so it pushes you towards success, even though, you know, when you start, it might not, not feel like that. And so F sharp is fun to work with at small scale, but it really starts to shine at larger scale. The more you play with it, the more you appreciate its depth and how fun it really is to use. It's like a video game that has such a good end game that the earlier parts just feel like a long tutorial. Next, I've personally been using F Sharp as my main language and personal projects for the past few years and have really been enjoying it. I mostly build full stack web apps with F Sharp and HTMX, which is my version or implementation of the ham stack. So that's where my perspective comes from. But with the power of .NET, you can really build anything with F Sharp from CLIs to video games to generative art. While I built many projects with F Sharp, I've yet to use F Sharp for work. In my opinion, F Sharp's weakest attribute is its level of adoption. That's why I'm making these videos to try and raise adoption. But it's really opened my eyes to what programming can be and different ways to solve common problems. So even if you don't think you'll use it at work or your own projects, I still think it's a great toy to play with. At the very least, you'll learn a lot. If you like this post, you might also like the state of F Sharp in 2023, how I got interested in F Sharp coming from a background of JavaScript, Python, TypeScript, C Sharp, and the best way to get started learning and building with F Sharp, which is my recommended learning path, curating some of the best resources um, to learn different aspects of the language, what makes it good, and how to build your own projects. That's it for this video. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.